Uguay makes this another Kung Fu Panda style DreamWorks logo. The peacocks ruled over Gongmen City, for they had invented fireworks. That's all it takes to rule an entire city? Fireworks? Sign me up. The young lord set out to change his fate, but what he did next only sealed it. Man, I'm starting to sense a theme across this franchise. Uguay said it in the first one. One often seals his fate on the way to avoid it, or something like that. But in their faces, he saw only horror. The last film opened with an anime-ish dream sequence, and this time it's beautiful and wisdom-filled narration from Michelle Yeoh over a unique shadow puppety 2D cell animation art style that's really pleasing to watch. Find more metal! Hot dang, that's Gary Oldman! Gary Oldman is always a win. You couldn't cast a better peacock villain ruler. How is he doing that with his face? <laughs> it's nice to be able to sort of take a breath knowing that the edge between Poe and the Five is gone and they're truly friends now after their first adventure. Just completely blown away again by this amazing animation style and pure beauty. It is the next phase of your training. Every master. Gotta love that even after training under Shifu for quite a while, he can still surprise and confuse his students. Oh, the day you were chosen as Dragon Warrior was the worst day of my life. By far. Painful and thorough honesty. And a little serious continuity with Uguay's staff that was passed to Shifu having to be prepared after Tai Lung shattered it. And once again blown away by the ethereal use of lighting and shadows. The animators really did something special in these films. Even the way the light hits particular furs on Poe's arm. Magnificent. Now I'm reminded why these films are set apart. Each member of the five has their own style that's appropriate for their species, and somehow it's just as entertaining as watching a typical human kung fu fight. As you'd expect, teamwork comes up a lot, whether they're fighting with each other, protecting each other, or otherwise solving problems together. And saving the pig guy. More series continuity using the same cartoon anime from Poe's dreams in the first film. In honor of my son, free tofu dessert for everybody! Uh, with purchases. Frugality. And I'm okay with Poe's dad using a little exploitation of his son's notoriety to sell food. Man's gotta eat. Son, uh, uh, baby geese come from a, a little egg. Foul reproduction lessons. I think we all knew that Mr. Ping was the real hero of this story and whatever led to him adopting a panda, but man, taking in a panda that was left in the alley behind his home who ate all his radishes? Really nails it home. A little dragon warrior shadowing slash callback? Another great animal representation from this franchise since peacocks really do use their kicking thorns, which are sharp spurs on their feet, slash opponents. Well, predators. You get the idea. Oh, it's your parting gift, in that it will part you. Part of you here, part of you there. And, and you couldn't ask for a more sinister yet still witty baddie. Never knew to be afraid of peacocks. Although it'd be clear if said peacock had Gary Oldman's voice. But you probably wouldn't expect a peacock to be such a formidable kung fu practitioner. <laughs> Fun little metaphor for what's about to happen. Shen may not be the Kung Fu master, so Master Rhino can use his size and strength to his advantage, whether he's a Kung Fu master or not. Then Shen flips the script with the ultimate show of power. File that under things that must have happened at least once throughout history. People assuming they can Kung Fu technology. Fake Mantis in a cage shadowing. He'll be back before you can say noodles. Noodles. Don't noodles? You'll never hear me complaining about an epic hero walk in front of an epic sun, an epic wind blowing epic sand across the epic frame. Epic. And a journey to save Kung Fu montage intercut with a Shen making weapons montage is the fastest way to get some more amazingly stunning 2D animation. Inner peace. <laughs> never has there ever been a better representation of what it feels like to try to make yourself feel peaceful. Serenity now. I used to punch the ironwood trees by the palace. Punch the ironwood trees by the Jade Palace, slap the fabled slapping tree of Gongqing Forest. Why is Kung Fu Panda always setting me up for How I Met Your Mother references? Something that one of my super smart fans pointed out in the first film is how great it is that although the animals are anthropomorphized, they kept them looking like animals. No human femalization in physique or mannerisms. And that's a definite win. If you continue on your current path, you will find yourself at the bottom of the stairs. Prophecy win. Isn't that the guy who hammered you in the face? Helpful observations. And now I see where Sam Fisher got his moves. I love that that pig just stares. Passive neglect like you treat a deranged person. Pretty good martial arts style. Mastication meets de defecation. Sometimes you just need to eat, chew, digest, and then evacuate your opponents. I mean, especially if you're an animal. 
You could say it's for comedic effect, and it is. But it's also a consistent part of the story that just because Poe is the dragon warrior doesn't mean he's the best at anything, or even decent at some things, like stealth. But he's still all right at some things. But if we stand up to Shin, he will turn the weapon on the city. Not sure what you expected from the Allstate Ox. He's got to set an example. You guys see that? It's called being awesome. Accurate. With the spare for dessert. Let's talk about how the makers of these Kung Fu Panda films like to cast martial artists like Jackie Chan in their animated Kung Fu films. Martial artists for whom English is a second language. Honestly, it's a pretty smart move. Somehow, even Jean-Claude Van Damme's voice gives the characters authenticity and the story credibility. The detail that had to go into this city. It's all 3D models, no matte paintings. Ugh, just more examples of how much they care. Things that are in frame for one frame that were painstakingly created by digital artists. Yeah! Sonic Boom Butt Punch. Whoa, is that a dolly zoom in an animated film? Okay, there's some attention to detail I never noticed. The second Mantis is put into the cage, he's the doll. You can tell by how he stops moving independently. He must have crawled up Poe's arm with a little sleight of hand just as he reached the edge of the cage. Another one of those things they didn't have to do, no one was gonna notice, but they did it right anyway. Greetings, Panda. At last we meet. Oh, no, 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 no. Practice makes perfect, and it's a greeting, so politeness. Consistently stunned by the beautiful locations that were created for such small scenes. And I'm not mentioning how pretty the lighting is again. I'm not saying that. Leave it to Shen to use the recently defeated City Master's weapon as a warning to anyone who'd cross him. More tasteful than what Joffrey usually did. Thanks for carrying me those last few flights. Okay. Second big expectation subversion after the opening eating challenge. This time it illustrates Poe's biggest strength. No one ever thinks he has any strengths. Greetings, Panda. We meet at Hey, how you doing? Hey. <laughs> You can actually hear Oldman's disdain for Black in there. Polished thespian versus, well, Jack Black. And another accurate animal representation. Peacocks do use their plumage for mating, but they've also been known to use it as a distraction. An invigorating action set piece, starting with cannonballs being shot at them, then flaming arrows, and then they ingeniously use the falling tower to catapult themselves over the wall to safety. Fun example of being outmanned, outgunned, and still finding a solution to victory. It's kind of the mythos of Poe's life. The year of the peacock begins now. Right now? Because it's the middle of the year. <laughs> you see, it's funny because Gary Oldman is a British actor and so like the whole year of whatever Chinese calendar wouldn't really matter, I mean, or like have the same meaning, but like they're in China, oh, you get it. I wouldn't necessarily say that Gary Oldman is a peacock the way that Dustin Hoffman is a red panda or that Jennifer Goodwin is a bunny, but the creepy wide-eyed crazy does fit his personality really well. Wait, I have to go back. Was that like the Kung Fu equivalent of breaking Wind? Wait, no, it wasn't supposed to be a fart joke. Tigers, no! Attack hugging. Michelle Yeoh was such a great cast for this part. She can always do wise and thoughtful sage, but she never sucks the life out of the room by also having some comedic effect. Ha! That's the walk with Tai Lung's face smashed into it from the first movie. Looking for me? Um, I said that too soon, didn't I? Terminator 2 reference uh, and tension subversion. Anti-stormtrooper tuning fork game. Which I need to point out is an appropriate piece of metal to have been stolen from the musicians in the beginning. Your parents didn't love you. Ooh, what kind of actor could deliver such vitriol and still always be a win, you ask? Gary Oldman. Stop fighting. Let it flow. The entire premise of Poe starting to remember things might feel like a narrative crutch, but in reality, it all makes sense. None of this would have surfaced in the first film when he was so focused on becoming the Dragon Warrior and overcoming his issues from that film. Now that he's found some confidence and has friends, friends who were and still are his idols, his brain starts showing him flashes of the past. And of course, visual cues are going to trigger his memories. And it makes sense that trauma, especially head trauma, would do the same. Well, no big surprise that John Powell and Hans Zimmer working together would produce an amazing score. I know this is a less than objective win, but dang, becoming a father has changed the scene for me. Having to give up your son to save his life? Yowzers. Love the 2D change to 3D, signifying Poe's final acceptance that this was real. It's no longer a dream in his head. And the score and visuals never fail to make you feel some emotion. Dang it, I forgot how good this movie is. You guys were right to keep pestering me about it. A building up momentum by seeing images from your past, realizing it was all possible because of your mother's sacrifice montage is the fastest way to get me all hyped up. A panda stands between you and your destiny. What? <laughs> yes, that was so good. Reality win. 
Oh, and even more reality. That's your freedom! Viper, weapon of death! The way Jack Black delivers those lines. It's like he's still a fanboy geeking over the five and showing off that he knows the moves, whether he's making them up on the spot or not. It also gives each member something specific to do while still being an epic showcase of teamwork. Step one, free the five. What's step two? Honestly, I didn't think I'd make it this far. Honesty. Rock. And a signature kick split from Van Damme. Good stuff. Shifu! Yep. Some people have an elegant way of doing things. Others have other ways. <laughs> Smoke too soon on the geeking out. Ah, I love this movie. Yep. Fire! No. Standing up for what's right. Yeah, the whole inner piece water droplet control thing had a practical application. Kung Fu can stop a cannibal. And I love that the cannonballs change from red to yellow as if he's diffusing their malice as he redirects their energy. Ha! <laughs> Goading, but in a healthy competition sort of way. See, that's the thing, Shen. Scars heal. No, they don't. Wounds heal. <laughs> I'll take medical lessons from Gary Shenden anytime. Shen gives us one last illustration of meeting your destiny on the road to avoiding it, and letting Shen be the instrument of his own destruction plays right into the theme of these films. And I applaud them for not having them cash in on all bad guys are actually secretly good since they set up the opportunity for that earlier. My parents hated me. Do you understand? They wronged me, and I will make it right. They loved you. This was his choice. He chose this path. But even still, this last conversation between hero and villain is exactly what we love about Poe. How did you do it? You know, you just keep your elbows up and keep the shoulders loose. Not that. I scarred you for life. See, that's the thing, Shen. Scars heal. He's not mean. He's still trying to help Shen. He's not making fun of him. He's just a sincere, goofy, big-hearted panda. I had a pretty good teacher. Hug it. What? <laughs> I didn't go and save China. I know why, but why? I don't think I gave James Hong enough credit in the last film. He carries this funny yet heartwarming scene all by himself. And in his few scenes, he conveys the love he has for his son and vice versa for Jack Black. I know who I am. You do? I'm your son. Well, probably another unobjective win having a son now, but that'll get you good. You got me, Bo. You got me. Anybody else get a Dan Deacon vibe from this credit score? Oh, Junkie XL remixed it. I guess just more credit to Powell and Zimmer for bringing him in. Anyway, even the ending credits give us Poe's journey from his parents to Mr. Ping and then some of the events of the last film. Not a frame wasted. All right, I'm gonna go listen to Spider-Man of the Rings now. I can't say I wouldn't have been nervous as, say, the money person behind this film to give the reins to someone who only worked in the animation department in the first film. But man, was Jennifer Nelson the right call to direct. In some ways, she even surpassed the original film, but also picked up where that film left off in a satisfying way. Poe wasn't depowered, he didn't need to relearn Kung Fu or rebuild relationships with the five. He's the dragon warrior, and these are his friends. Even Shifu carries his level of respect over from the first film. So where do you go from there? The biggest theme and main question this film asks is, Who am I? Which is fantastic. Poe sort of asks it in response to the news that he's adopted, but it's fantastic that even the dragon warrior is still searching for his place in the world. Because power, status, even friends can't answer that question for you. And the great thing is that he accepts his call to adventure in search of answers, but really didn't need to go anywhere to learn what's actually important. I'm your son. And they managed to blend the story of Poe's origin with the end of Kung Fu. Storyline perfectly. A new villain with a new goal that affects all of China, but still has some serious ramifications for Poe. Ah. My old enemy, Stairs. Well, more than that. Solid story and second outing for these characters. I know I already talked about the lighting effects. I was just completely mesmerized in this film. There's so often a bright light highlighting one side of the scenery and characters, and light beams shooting through or obscuring the images. It's like the entire film was made to look like it was shot during the golden hour. But in general, this film is brilliant looking. Every frame is like a Chinese painting come to life. Even the rainy scenes that are supposed to be dreary and depressing are utterly gorgeous. Quick flashes of Shen's shadow in a red cloud of smoke. A camera shake as the wolves jump from roof to roof. And Poe fulfilling the soothsayer's prophecy by briefly turning into the yin and yang symbol. All pieces that added up to something truly breathtaking. Piece of what? I, I just told you. Another bit of visual storytelling is the contrast between the two camps set up in the beginning. 
The serene Jade Palace, where Shifu and Poe have their talk, is entirely green, blue, and filled with calming tones, whereas everything surrounding Shen is red, black, and harsh shades of charcoal and metal. The way the light is used in the first attack on the musicians, it's almost a clashing of the colors as Shen's wolves ascend on the peaceful villagers. After the visuals, the next best thing happening is the comedy. Maybe a little more under the radar than the first, but Jack Black's presence turns most of the moments that could otherwise feel bland or even silly into hilarity. Tobias Fuqua is always on. Isn't that the guy who hammered you in the face? Hammered you in the face? They can be tough not to just hear Seth Rogen when Mantis is talking, but that doesn't take away from some of his better lines. At least we destroyed the weapon! Oh, no, he's got way more. And then Jackie Chan had me rolling a couple times, too. Here's your New Year's gift! Hope you like it, because you can't return it! <laughs> return it! Return it! Even Gary Oldman had a couple funny moments in between his snarling. A little to the left. Perfect. With the weapon by my... a little bit more. One actor who I think needs to be pointed out is Danny McBride. The one-eyed wolf boss didn't have a ton to do, but he was just so solid. Threatening, but not enough to compete with Shen, and then he had his moment of redemption before his death. Just like the first film, they managed to do animated kung fu really well and make it extremely entertaining. The most impressive thing is the use of real kung fu fighting styles that are specifically tailored to each animal. Adds a whole other level to this cartoon about animals on an adventure when they actually make riveting fight sequences. So, Kung Fu Panda Goes to the Land of Remembered sequels is probably one of the best follow-ups ever, and they clearly knew it since they set up the next one at the end. Apologies on the switcheroo this week, unforeseen excuse, yada yada, not my fault, blah blah blah. You already know what next week is since it was supposed to be this week, but here's another frame in case you're unsure.